Have you ever wondered why we go to war? Or why you never seem to be able to get out of debt? Why there is poverty, division, and crime? What if I told you there was a reason for it all? Fellow slaves, it's time to buckle your seatbelt. The QAnon conspiracy theory has taken off around the world. And we are all enslaved by a hidden enemy. The bizarre ideology has attracted millions of believers worldwide, including a large number in Australia, fueled by the lockdowns during COVID-19. To achieve this victory against the greatest force of evil the world has ever known. I really look at it as like a force of nature. It's like a coronavirus of the mind. In America, QAnon's dark and divisive politics have fueled ugly conflict. In Australia, it has led to families being split apart. We've watched the change over these last years be quite dramatic. That's what raises our concern, that we do have family members who are involved. The Stewart family in Sydney are among those deeply concerned over QAnon's spread as they've watched their son and brother, Tim Stewart, become immersed in its beliefs. Tim believes that the world has really been taken over by satanic pedophiles, or Luciferian pedophiles, they call them, and that that is represented by the left, so the radical left. And if you don't believe in the QAnon perspectives, then you're a pedophile enabler. Tim Stewart has been a close family friend of Prime Minister Scott Morrison and has reportedly boasted about his access to the PM. I would think that someone in a position like Prime Minister Morrison would want to condemn those views and indicate strongly to the public that they have no bearing on his official actions, on his responsibilities, nor on his worldview. I find it deeply offensive that there would be any suggestion that I would have any involvement or support for such a dangerous organisation. I clearly do not. Tonight on Four Corners, we hear for the first time from a family who have watched with alarm as their son has descended into an extremist political conspiracy. And they share their concerns about his relationship with the Prime Minister of Australia. On Sydney's suburban fringe, the Stewart clan sits down to dinner. First toast of the evening. There's the life's journey still going yeah. on. Still going and on. we're all in it. Yeah. We sure are. It's good to be together. Yeah. Over recent years, the conversation during these family gatherings has often been tainted by a dark topic, the apocalyptic ideology of the far-right conspiracy theory QAnon which has split this family. We've watched the change over these last years be quite dramatic, and a lot of that was to do with QAnon. You are a mother who still loves her son... Yes. Um, ..and would like to maintain a relationship with him. Mm -hmm. How is it, as, as a mum, watching this? It's not pleasant, um, and, you know, the relationship has become quite strained over this last year. It's like a conversion and a, there is that religious undertone to QAnon and so constantly donning their the armour of God and things like that because they are out there having to fight against the Satanists that have taken over the world. Val and Brian Stewart and their daughter Karen have decided to speak out as a warning to others. What has prompted them is witnessing 51-year-old Tim Stewart descend into the world of QAnon. Tim believes that the world has really been taken over by satanic pedophiles, or Luciferian pedophiles, they call them, and that that is represented by um, the left, so the, the radical left. Keeping the public informed when the deep state war breaks out onto the surface. They believe there's a spiritual warfare being waged and that they have knowledge of this and so that they're on a crusade to make sure that the Satanists are overthrown and things like that. 
The world is currently experiencing a dramatic covert war of biblical proportions. Literally the fight for Earth between the forces of good and evil. QAnon really came onto the radar screen in October of 2017 on a website called 4chan. May God bless America. Where individuals propagated this conspiracy theory that the United States government was secretly being run by a cabal of Satan-worshipping, cannibalistic child predators who were running a global sex trafficking ring and were hell-bent on undermining Donald Trump while he was in office. Now, this conspiracy theory was not only untrue, it was, in my view, indiscriminately crazy. That's why we have Q. The conspiracy theory was started by an anonymous online figure known as Q, who has never been identified. It came to be called the Great Awakening. Someone started posting as a secret insider in the US government, calling themselves Q as a reference to the Q level security clearance, which doesn't actually exist outside of the Department of Energy. And in the initial Q drop saying that uh, Hillary Clinton would be arrested the next day, which obviously did not happen. But over time, this individual or this group of individuals, and it's still not clear who exactly it was, continued to post um, and continued to gather a following. Miles Taylor was the chief of staff at the US Department of Homeland Security in the Trump administration. It was clear to me in late 2018 and early 2019 that these conspiracy theory trends like QAnon were a danger to the country and that the vitriolic rhetoric on some of these message boards could jump the tracks into violence very, very easily. We were worried about that, and it wasn't just a law enforcement concern. We started to view it as a real national security threat. In the United States, the FBI has declared QAnon a potential domestic terrorism threat. But that hasn't happened in Australia. According to the Institute for Strategic Dialogue, Australia is the fourth largest country for QAnon-related activity online. In March 2020, we had obviously the outbreak of COVID-19 and along with that became a lot of sort of associated mental health pressures. And we know that belief in conspiracy theories is quite closely linked to, um, you know, various mental health stresses. Um, and so we saw an explosion of conspiracy activity around the world, including in Australia. Um, and as part of that, we did see um, QAnon come to Australia in a more significant way than it had been before. I think people forget that coronavirus initially, when it first came out, it was very traumatic for a lot of people. No one knew where this virus had really come from, right? There was very little information. It came on so fast. Governments were shutting down. People were scared. It was traumatic. And they go searching for answers. Recent university graduate, Jatath Jadeja, is a moderator of an online forum for people who've lost family members to what they call the cult. The QAnon Casualties Reddit group has about 160,000 members, including in Australia. The power of QAnon is not even really about the beliefs. The power is the behavioural change that it causes in a believer. It's destructive to the person themselves and their relationships, their family and friends. Every day I see stories of families being ripped apart, people's children being kicked out of the house by their parents, people having to call off marriages after decades, people's parents, you know, accusing them of um, wanting their children to die. So it is the saddest place on the internet. Jatath was completely engrossed in the conspiracy theory for a year and a half. One of his biggest regrets is that he got one of his relatives involved. We would talk for hours, four or five hours just sitting, standing in front of the, standing in the kitchen, just talking. And the moment I got out, I realised, like, what have I done? What have I done? And I tried, I've tried to talk to him, I've tried to get him out. It doesn't work. Tim Stewart, a town planner and former bankrupt, was an early follower of QAnon in Australia. Around 2017, he started a blog called Sideways Step for expansive thinkers and spiritual explorers. 
One of the posts is titled, The Reason for the Treason, a conversation for the Great Awakening. The Great Awakening is revealing that dark forces have found their way into the highest levels of influence. So the idea of the Great Awakening and also of the storm is sort of linked to the idea that there will be some sort of cataclysmic awakening of, of all the people around the world as sort of the scales drop from their eyes and they see, um, they see this global satanic paedophile cabal for what they truly are. Um, and the idea is that, that Donald Trump in some way was going to bring on the storm which would lead to the Great Awakening. Tim Stewart's blog lays out a central belief of QAnon that leftist elites are running a pedophile ring that harvests children's blood. The true nature of these crimes shows that humans are being treated as a commodity and human energy is being harvested without permission. Furthermore, it is focused on children who are more innocent and unaware. Why do evil people wish to rob a young child of their virginity? Why do they drink blood? Why do they need to sacrifice humans? In Australia, Tim Stewart rose to prominence in local QAnon circles when his Twitter account, at BurnSpy34, was included in a post by Q known as a QDrop that users have to decode. That's how a lot of these QAnon influencers got their start um, and sort of first came to the attention of the rest of the QAnon community. And so we know from archive versions of the Burns by Twitter account that in uh, early 2019 he had sort of around 1,700 followers and that by late 2019 had, you know, 20,000-odd followers. The Stewart family watched in alarm as Tim's beliefs became an obsession. It's really outlandish and we've heard things from the Queen being a shape-shifting lizard to all sorts of things where a being might come down and do some training and astral projection and time travelling and things like that. Your son <coughs> believes that Donald Trump is saving the world from leftist pedophiles. Yes, that is so. Mm. And your son believes and has said to you that he believes that both Jacinda Ardern, the New Zealand Prime Minister, and Michelle Obama, the former First Lady, are actually men. Yes, that has been said to me, yes. If people wear red shoes, then that's they're wearing red so that when babies are sl slaughtered and the blood falls on the ground, that no one will see the blood spatter. And there's been tweets from them that say, if you don't believe in the QAnon perspectives, then you're a pedophile enabler. At the same time that Tim Stewart was descending into QAnon, one of his old friends ascended to the highest office in the land. Scott Morrison became Prime Minister in August 2018. Tim Stewart's wife, Linnell, has been best friends with Scott Morrison's wife, Jenny, for decades. The two couples cemented their friendships at their local Baptist church in the early 1990s. Well, it's a close one. There's no doubt about that. The two girls in particular have known each other f for high school onwards. And uh, then the two men who married the two girls became friends as well along the way. They've had a lifelong friendship together. Would you say best friends? Oh, yes, I would say best friends, yes. Jenny was Linnell's maid of honour and Linnell was Jenny and Scott's bridesmaid. Jenny Morrison describes Linnell Stewart on her Facebook page as her dear old friend. Linnell says Jenny is a precious treasure and a forever friend. When Mr Morrison entered Parliament, the Stewarts were delighted. Tim was invited to attend Scott's maiden speech. He was excited, so was I, when Scott was um, uh, elected. The member for Cook. Mr Speaker, 
It is with humility. I thought it was rather a privilege that Tim was one of those who received the invitation. I would imagine that any incumbent, for the, speaking for the first time, would ask people to attend who were in some way special to him. When Tim and Linnell Stewart celebrated their 24th wedding anniversary in August 2017, then Treasurer Scott Morrison sent his congratulations on Linnell's Facebook page. Happy anniversary, guys. Still remember you telling Jen and I a very long time ago in our little flat in Bronte that you had an amazing guy. You were right. These photos, which they shared on Facebook, are from the following year, when the Morrison family holidayed with the Stuarts on the New South Wales South Coast. When the Morrisons moved into the Prime Minister's residence in Sydney, Kirribilli House, Linnell Stewart was hired to work as a household attendant. Linnell's looking after the children and the dog even before she was employed, so certainly was helping out. She's technically employed by Prime Minister and Cabinet um, and her role has been to assist in looking after the children and, and things like that. Linnell Stewart has frequently posted photographs from Kirribilli on her social media, including this one of her and her husband, Tim Stewart, in 2018. The families even celebrated New Year's Eve together at the Prime Minister's residence. In January 2019, Tim Stewart shared these photos from Kirribilli, saying he was house-sitting. The little boy is his son. I don't think it was an uncommon thing for them to be there, not at all. I can see there's photos from New Year's Eve there and things like that, we've, we've seen that, yep. Tim Stewart liked to boast about his friendship with Scott Morrison. One associate who says he heard these boasts was Ella High Priest, a self-styled online anti-corruption crusader who was questioned by counter-terrorism police after social media posts where he said he'd successfully hacked the Prime Minister's office. Priest, who met Tim Stewart once in 2018, claims Stewart said he could pass information to the PM. Tim had said that he could make evidence I had about government corruption available to the Prime Minister and have the Prime Minister of Australia act on that evidence. Priest says Tim Stewart sent him this picture of Tim and Scott Morrison together. I can't emphasise enough how close Tim said the families were, which was why he said there was a way, due to that closeness, that he could influence the Prime Minister. At the time, Scott Morrison was preparing for one of his first acts as Prime Minister, a national apology to survivors of institutional child sexual abuse. Ella High Priest set up a meeting with Tim Stewart and others. The group wanted the phrase ritual sexual abuse included in the national apology. So when the QAnon conspiracy is using the term ritual abuse, they're using it as synonymous with child torture, um, cannibalism, um, really um, the most gross and, and vivid and graphic um, allegations of, um, of, of child abuse that you can imagine. It has been folded into a set of beliefs about the United States government um, in which there are um, high-powered, high-profile individuals who secretly engage in these strange satanic ceremonies. Ella High Priest showed Four Corners messages he says Tim Stewart sent him, referring to his attempts to get the words ritual abuse into the apology. I am organising an intimate strategy for the PM, re the ritual phrase. OK, mate, I'm just preparing a message to Scott now, re Monday. Once he's awake, mate, he will kick ass. Priest says he also received a text message Tim Stewart said he had sent to his wife, Linnell. An army of victims and therapists would specifically love it if Scott's apology referenced ritual abuse victims. This exact wording is a key phrase for victims. 
Think of this like a code that sends a direct and clear message that they have been heard by Scott specifically. Hundreds of survivors of child sexual abuse in the nation's institutions will gather at Parliament House in Canberra this morning for an apology from the Prime Minister. On the 22nd of October 2018, Parliament House opened its doors to abuse survivors and their supporters for the apology by Scott Morrison. There was a lot of people waiting for a long time for this apology. We felt like we were a part of history. We wanted it to be the, the moment of change. We really believed that this was a, the turning around of the, the tragedy of sexual assault against children in the nation. That morning, Tim Stewart's text to Ella High Priest suggested he was feeling confident. Good morning, mate. I think Scott is going to do it. Pretty sure speech is at 11. I hope he says it. Scott is very aware of the enormity of today. Government business, notice number one, motion relating to the national apology to victims and survivors of institutional child sexual abuse. At 11am, the Prime Minister rose to deliver the historic speech. I move that the House apologise to the victims and survivors of institutional child sexual abuse. It happened anywhere a predator thought they could get away with it, and the systems within these organisations allowed it to happen and turned a blind eye. It happened day after day, week after week, month after month, decade after decade, unrelenting torment. The speech was received, I think, tremendously well. It was taken in the spirit that it was offered, which was, I think, a, a spirit of generosity, um, a spirit of repentance and regret. Uh, and that's something that survivors of sexual abuse don't often get. They don't often get someone saying, I'm sorry that this has happened to you. I regret that this has happened to you. The crimes of ritual sexual abuse happened in schools, churches, youth groups, scout troops, orphanages, foster homes. But close observers of the process were taken aback by the use of the phrase ritual sexual abuse. Ritual child sexual abuse wasn't a focus of the Royal Commission. It wasn't evident in the reports or in the recommendations. And so certainly there were questions about where did this phrase come from? How did it arise? How did it come to be um, in the Prime Minister's speech in the manner that it was? I'm in contact with international networks of mental health workers particularly who treat children and adults who have been subject to sexual exploitation. And I was contacted, I was emailed, um, people reached out about this phrase. Um, it is a phrase that we're aware of, it's a very sensitive phrase. The use of the phrase ritual sex abuse would have been taken as validation of the conspiracy theory by QAnon followers because it's a, it's a person in authority using this phrase which appears to directly reference the conspiracy theory. Despite being asked repeatedly, the Prime Minister has not answered Four Corners questions on the record about whether Tim Stewart passed on information to him about the wording of the apology. Immediately after the apology, Tim Stewart began tweeting triumphantly using his Twitter account at burnedspy34. What a great speech at Scott Morrison MP acknowledging the victims of ritual abuse. A new conversation began today in Australia. It was a stepping stone to be sure, but we took the step. At Scott Morrison MP took control of the narrative powerfully and commenced phase one of our restoration. Tim Stewart's son, Jesse, who is also a QAnon follower, celebrated on Twitter using QAnon codes and hashtags. You know the Great Awakening is in full swing when the Australian Prime Minister at Scott Morrison MP mentions ritual abuse. Scott is a patriot. So within the QAnon community, it was first reported that Burn Spy and Scott Morrison had some kind of relationship or moved in the same social circles. That was taken as a tacit approval or tacit proof of this plan. 
of the conspiracy of the Great Awakening of where the good guys will take over, that maybe Scott Morrison's on board, you know. And it, it, as much as... I wish I didn't have to say this, but it's true that the lack of condemnation and the lack of response to that, con to that relationship by Scott Morrison, and I don't like saying that because I don't, I actually like him, that was show like people just thought that it was, it was low key approval. That's it. And it, and it, and it boosted the authenticity of the movement. Ella High Priest texted Tim Stewart about other issues he wanted Stewart to raise with the Prime Minister, such as his claim that school students were being taught about homosexual sex. Tim Stewart replied, I'm in shock. This is going straight to Scott. The Prime Minister did not respond on the record to Four Corners questions about why the words ritual abuse were included in the apology. A spokesperson for the Prime Minister has previously said... The term ritual is one that the Prime Minister heard directly from the abuse survivors and the national apology to victims and survivors of child sexual abuse reference group he met with in the lead-up to the apology and refers not just to the ritualised way or patterns in which so many crimes were committed but also to the frequency and repetition of them. Four Corners has spoken to most of the members of the reference group and seen their formal written advice. The phrase ritual abuse is not mentioned. We honour every survivor in this country. We love you, we hear you and we honour you. Watching Scott Morrison's apology at home was Tim Stewart's sister Karen, who had their parents, Val and Brian, by her side. And when I heard the word ritual in that speech, my phone next to me buzzed and it was a family member saying, did you hear that, did you hear that? That's the first time that's ever been said in the Australian Parliament. The apology had particular significance for Karen Stewart, who says she was sexually assaulted when she was a child. A speech that was to empower us, to make us feel like we'd been heard, to take us seriously, we achieved all that. So in the one speech, I received that, and then the word ritual pops in there, and I felt that that snatched it away because it was a signal to another group of people that, that are not there for my healing. Karen Stewart's experience echoes that of so many survivors in both the abuse and how the institution responded. Karen was 14 when she says she was repeatedly sexually assaulted by two young men from her church community. She told her parents and her brother Tim, who supported her through the aftermath. Even though we didn't know the details, the, the details at the time didn't matter to us. What mattered was something horrible had happened that was emotionally destroying. I noticed a girl who had lost a softness of character that had previously been there, somebody who became hard, somebody who sought values that were not those that we'd instilled within her. There was a change that took place. And looking back on it now, like as an adult who sort of knows a lot more about the world, what do you think that young girl was going through? Trauma. Trauma that I didn't understand. Sorry, I, I'm doing what I don't want to do, so just give me a moment. The pastor of the church eventually conceded that a serious crime was committed against Karen. In 2011, Karen reported the assaults to police. They decided there was insufficient evidence to proceed. The emotional effect and the trauma we have since learned is never out of her mind. And for us as a whole family, we've had now 30 years of what has been trauma and traumatic. It's, it's, it's huge, it doesn't go away um, ever. Karen
Karen Stewart's experience as a survivor has amplified her distress over her brother's obsession with QAnon and its discredited theory about ritual sexual abuse. They talk about saving the children, but I was that child. I was once the child that they claim they're saving. My life is the worse for having QAnon in it. That was one of the moments where I recognised that my brother cared more about QAnon than about the healing of people in relation to their own child sexual abuse. QAnon hasn't made the world a better place for survivors. It hasn't made the world a better place for children. We can't point to one positive development or advancement that has been driven by QAnon. And it risks submerging, you know, legitimate issues, legitimate disclosures um, within a, a conspiracy culture. In the past couple of years, Karen Stewart has become estranged from her brother Tim, and their political beliefs have become even more polarised. Karen ran as a state candidate for the Greens, while Tim Stewart's views became extreme and sometimes bizarre. Tim would be in a place that I knew I couldn't follow, and so that's what began to create a, a division between us because I couldn't go to the same places that he would consider he was in and believe what he believed and um, support what he supports. For families affected by QAnon, it's a common experience. When I was deep into QAnon, it destroyed beyond repair a lot, if not most of my relationships. Because at some point, you can't not talk about QAnon. You're like this homeless guy on the street shouting about Judgment Day. And even then, it's not a discussion. You're not talking to the person. You're talking at them. And they are standing there and sitting there. And you can see, like, the disinterest in their eyes. You can see the almost disdain and the pity. But you cannot stop yourself. Tim Stewart and his son, Jesse, have become increasingly well known in the QAnon world. There's quite a story with you two. In November, they were interviewed on a YouTube QAnon talk show. Thanks for having me on. It's an honour to be here. Both appeared using their online personas, Burn Notice for Tim and Negan HQ for Jesse. And I had an older account. The hosts applauded the father and son duo. It was actually kind of good. We could really start start doing, looking at things together and exploring stuff together once uh, once what, we knew who we, we were. What a great bond. <laughs> I mean, that's just the great yeah. thing. You're both like separate patriots that found out you were patriots in the same war, in the same troop, in the same battalion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't answer a question, Burn. who Q was. Who do you think Q is? But whether it's a, a uh, you know, cosmic social experiment on humanity or you know, a really clever person from the NSA that's just, you know, gone out on their own and gone rogue. Yeah. Whatever the case is, it's worth keeping an eye on. Before the US election, Tim Stewart reposted a comment on the far-right social media platform Gab, saying... It is our obligation to overthrow the tyrannical ruling class. After Joe Biden won the election, Tim Stewart posted... The deep state have committed open electoral fraud in full view of the world. Things are about to get very messy for those who commit treason, and for those who aid and abet those committing treason. Jesse Stewart wrote, We shall go on to the end. We shall fight on a global scale. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall never surrender. Our movement beyond the seas, armed and guarded by the QAnon fleet, would carry on the struggle. The subject of Tim Stewart's beliefs and his relationship with the Prime Minister has been raised in the Senate 
three times. Please don't make assertions about what I'm doing. In October 2019, Labor Senator Penny Wong raised questions about Linnell Stewart's employment at Kirribilli House. He's a close friend of the Prime Minister, uh, one of Australia's leading proponents of the QAnon conspiracy theory. I'll take uh, is a partner of that person on the Prime Minister's staff. Has a QAnon conspiracist been invited to either the Kirribilli or the, lo Kirribilli or the Lodge? Uh, and another assertion in the story is that information from this person has been passed directly to the Prime Minister. Um, has the department in Sorry, this... I'm taking all of these yeah, questions. I understood that. Yeah, I understood yeah. that. The Prime Minister's department later responded, saying that the personal relationships of the PM staff were not a matter for the department and that it had no knowledge of the other issues raised. Soon after the Senate hearing, Scott Morrison posted a jovial comment on Tim Stewart's Facebook page. Happy birthday, Tim Stewart. Nice to see the mullet out of the time capsule. Tim replied, thanks, mate. I don't understand why the Prime Minister would want to be seen to be with someone who has such radical beliefs. That's not who I would want any Prime Minister regardless of who they are, hanging around with, hearing the sorts of things that come out of Tim's mouth in relation to QAnon. The Stewart family recall how that year, Tim and Linnell Stewart told them that they were hoping to holiday in Hawaii with the Morrisons over summer. Tim and Linnell were just sharing that there was a holiday planned in Hawaii and my impression was it was going to be a heap up of quite a few families which would include many who've been going to Hawaii for years. They would have all been involved. Um, Scott and Jenny were going to go as well, that was, that was mentioned. In December 2019, during the Black Summer bushfires, the Prime Minister went on leave and flew to Honolulu. Prime Minister Scott Morrison has attracted criticism for holidaying in Hawaii as blazes continue to burn across the country. After photographs emerged on social media, Mr Morrison rang in to a radio station. The, the girls and Jen, they love holidaying in Hawaii and so we've had a few nice days here. Mr Morrison was forced to cut short his trip. The same day, as Tim Stewart's family flew to Hawaii. The girls and Jen will stay on and stay out the rest of the time we had booked here, but I know Australians understand this and they'll be pleased I'm coming back, I'm sure, but um, they know that, uh, you know, I, I don't hold a hose, mate, and I, I don't sit in yeah. the control room. The Prime Minister did not respond on the record to Four Corners' questions about the Hawaii trip. In the past year, as part of a global crackdown on QAnon accounts, Twitter has permanently suspended Tim and Jesse Stewart's accounts for engaging in coordinated, harmful activity. In October last year, the concerns about Tim Stewart were again raised in the Senate. Are you aware that the Prime Minister's close friend has been banned from Twitter for what the social media platform describes as coordinated harmful activity? I mean, uh, I mean I'm not sure that you can characterise that person whom I don't know based on the fact that the wife is employed, having no. gone through all of the relevant Checks. I mean, I don't know that that's reasonable. You know, get, the suggestion. only thing oh, that I'm aware of is that, as has so. been confirmed by Ms. Foster, is that the woman concerned has been employed. No, and there doesn't is... seem to be any suggestion that um, there is anything concerned. I mean, the Department of Prime Minister and Cabinet was also asked about the inclusion of the phrase "ritual abuse." in the 2018 apology. So there's an allegation that there were, there were changes to the speech, um, 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 including, and this seems far-fetched, but um, I think it's, it would be useful to put it to you to, to, to make sure it's refuted, um, that um, this close associate had urged a change to the Prime Minister's speech to use a different word, the word being ritual. 
So I'm just th thinking, I, I, I'm asking, can we use this opportunity to make clear that is, isn't the case? So, Senator, um, I, don't, I don't know. Okay. I've just asked all of my staff okay. openly if anyone has any information. It would appear that the answer is no. Okay. So the best I can do is take that on notice. Okay, that's fine. No answer to that that's question right. was provided. Jesse Stewart blamed members of his family for the Twitter ban and sent them threatening text messages. You better tread lightly also. Want to play with fire and you will get burned. Watch yourself, buddy. I will make you lot famous, all of you. Fuck around and find out. Your grandson, Jesse, has sent threatening messages to the rest of your family. Yes, very much so, yeah. It's, that's, that's been for a period of just over a year that that's been happening, yes. Things escalated. My mother, a lovely woman, was, I don't know if I can swear on this, but called a, a cowardly motherfucker. So these are not your standard responses to a grandmother. And so they were quite concerning. And at that point we recognised all right, there's a level of radicalisation that is very different to even a year prior to that. Late last year, the Stewart family became so concerned they took the extraordinary step of reporting Tim and Jesse Stewart to the National Security Hotline several times. So it was at that moment that we decided we can make excuses for lots of things, but if we're under threat and our safety is a concern, we have to legitimately inform somebody because we no longer know these people. So we did make a report to the authorities to ensure that we were doing the right thing as community members. I don't know what might happen in Australia, but that's what raises our concern that we do have family members who are involved in something that could finish up being a threat to Australia. The Director General of ASIO, Australia's top spy chief, has also been informed about the activities of Tim and Jesse Stewart. Tim Stewart told Four Corners... I am too busy to read questions relating to the nonsense that's been put out there, which are just hit pieces. I don't promote or support any kind of violence. Four Corners has learned that Linnell Stewart stopped working at Kirribilli House at the end of last year. Scott Morrison did not respond on the record to Four Corners' questions about whether he and Tim Stewart are still friends. I think it's important for the Prime Minister and any other national leader to disavow individuals either within their orbit or outside of their orbit who harbour these types of extremist views. That's really important. And look, I understand, again, we all have friends and family members that have unorth unorthodox views, but when you're put in a position of public trust, you have to maintain the public's trust. In recent months, Tim Stewart has shared posts of Donald Trump calling the US election the big lie and has reposted conspiracies equating vaccines with Nazism. Jesse Stewart has started criticising Scott Morrison online. If governments start going the route of vaccine coercion, mandates, restrictions for those who refuse, vaccine passport or any other draconian idea, then motherfuckers are getting lynched. Call me extreme, crazy, I don't give a fuck. Fuck around and find out, Australian government. On April 28, in response to a post about corrupt politicians, Jesse Stewart said... I'd pay two grand to see certain people hanged. In an email to Four Corners, Jesse Stewart said he was referring to traitors and pedophiles. He described himself as a shit poster and satirist and said, I never have nor will participate in violence. The experience of watching someone become radicalised is the most unusual thing. We know how we get to know a stranger and bit by bit with every conversation you become to either like them or not like them and, and you can start a, a long-term relationship with a friend because of how that's panned out. 
but we never talk about what might happen if it goes in reverse. So the loving and caring brother and nephew, it went in reverse. They became strangers. Um, this is a question for you, Senator Birmingham. Three weeks ago, questions were again raised in Senate estimates about the Prime Minister's view of Tim Stewart's beliefs. The questions relate to whether or not the Prime Minister had anything to say about comments by his friend and QAnon proponent, a Mr Tim Stewart, describing the day of the Capitol Hill attack as one of the greatest days on earth. Um, Crikey also asked the PMO what measures, if any, were in place to prevent Mr Stewart having access to confidential information about the Prime Minister. What are the answers to those questions? Well, um, Senator Wong, in terms of if you want to pose those questions, I'll happily take them on notice for you in terms of a response uh, being provided. Do you agree that a friend of Mr Morrison's who adheres to these theories is a possible vector for foreign interference? Senator, I am not aware of the nature of the relationship. Uh, so, in that sense, you know, it's to some extent uh, a hypothetical, but I can certainly assure you that the Prime Minister takes uh, his security obligations seriously and is alert to all threats uh, that, uh, that uh, security agencies brief him on. There has still been no response to the questions taken on notice. Four Corners contacted the Prime Minister with a detailed list of questions five weeks ago and followed up with his office more than 20 times. Last question. On June the 4th, the Prime Minister was asked at a press conference about Four Corners' story. Are you concerned the ABC is involved in so-called vigilante journalism? Were the allegations put to you and what is your connection to the man at the centre of that story? Well, I find it deeply offensive that there would be any suggestion that I would have any involvement or support for such a dangerous organisation. I clearly do not. It's also just very disappointing that Four Corners, um, in their inquiries, would seek to cast this aspersion not just against me, but by members of my own family. I just think that's, that's really poor form. Two Thank days later, a spokesman for the Prime Minister provided a one-paragraph statement on the record to the program. This is a personally motivated slur against the Prime Minister and his family by a Four Corners program that is already facing serious questions about the accuracy, bias and credibility of its journalism, that is now giving credence to irrational Twitter conspiracy theorists and raising the profile of what the Prime Minister clearly deems a discredited and dangerous fringe group. <laughs> We popped over to see them all the other day, so it was was quite lovely to get a few photos and feel part of that mm. very extended family that we don't always get to see. The Stewart clan is deeply troubled by the breakdown of their family. They haven't given up on Jesse and Tim. I'm not a psychologist. I'm his mum and I hope that one day some of this might be in the past, but I know that there are just concerns that we would have in hearing and watching some of what has happened over particularly this last year or so. I think almost all of us have broken down on the phone trying to explain the loss of a family member. And I know my mother has viewed it, she's described it as grieving, grieving the loss of someone who's still alive. And that's, it's a very confusing emotion. Um, and so I feel for her in that, and Dad. Uh,